In our industry right now, the question that is on many people's lips is, does data replace creativity? And really, more appropriately, what is the interaction between data and creativity? Because they are both coming up at a rapid rate, and how do they play happily together? I work a lot uh, with our creatives on these different projects where we'll get a brief, and then they'll look to us for insights. And often the insights I bring, I think I'll know the creative idea, right? I'll have something and it'll be like, oh, widget X, you know, makes something better. And I'll be like, oh, well, that's gonna be the idea. We're gonna put somebody who has this bad, and we're gonna put widget X in, and then all of a sudden something's gonna be better. What I found is working with these creatives is it's an amazing system that happens because I'll bring forth this idea and I'll be like, oh, that's the line, totally that's the line. And they'll see something completely different in it. And through working together and really our harmonious efforts, like really and often we lock ourselves in a room to make this happen, uh, we get this output that is this hybrid of both this original idea that I had and this that, that the creatives came up with and sometimes it's indistinguishable where one started and one stopped. Another thing that we're thinking about a lot at Publicis is uh, this, the way that data itself is um, leveraged in the creative process to provide an accurate output. Right? One of the things about advertising that is uh, a really a fundamental tenet is that there is a rigorous honesty about what it is we're bringing forth. And that's something that is really important to me. Because you know, there's these statistics, and my personal favorite one is 80% uh, of pe pregnant ladies today are millennials, right? And that statistic is true except it's total BS, right? Because, well, there's, there's a terminus, right, with menopause, and then there's a beginning of the phase, and the oldest millennial is at 34 years old, so 10% is on that older phase, and 10% is on the younger phase, and yeah, 80% is in the middle. I mean, these are the kind of statistics that when I come up against when we're talking about creativity or we're talking about a brief, that I really like to kind of ground and say, okay, that's a beautiful statistic. But isn't there a better way to tell this story, right? I mean, pulling us back from this knee-jerk reaction of just, oh, let's throw some data on it. You know, that's a great, that's a great little ad you did there. Just spark a little data around it and this is gonna be great. It'll sell widgets like nobody's business. You know, I really think that there is a, an ethical uh, bind there. No, I shouldn't say a bind. I think that there is an ethical approach that we like to take, especially in the data science practice here. And this, I have noticed, really helps ease some of the tension between data and creativity. So there are a number of principles that we use when we approach data and creative problems, right? One of the principles is, is we never say no, right? When we're in a creative brief, and we're working it out and we're throwing stuff on the board and writing on whiteboards and getting crazy in there. Um, sometimes from a statistical perspective, you want to say things like, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't necessarily know if 80% of the ladies whom are pregnant now are really millennials. What's your sample set? What's your subset? Like, we really like to run with this and build it out and then once we have an idea crystallized and the creative process has happened and we've started to refine, at that point we go back and then we start to understand if the data underpinning these uh, statements are true. And that's part of the refinement process. I mean, this happens all the time. This is nothing new, right? This is part of the refinement process. And this is something that we look at data refinement all the way through because it allows for a better product, it allows for more accurate representation of the world, and it allows for our uh, partners to understand that what we bring to the table is an honest representation of a creative thought. 